distinctive aspect of Asia, which many people visit, is the wildlife of this part of the world. It is, of course, special Asian wildlife, and sometimes it's endangered or somewhat threatened. In this wonderful zoological park just outside Phnom Penh, there's a special area within the sanctuary set aside for the Asian sun bear and its relatives. It's the Phnom Tamao Zoological Gardens and Rescue Centre in Phnom Penh. Emma, where do all these beautiful looking bears come from? Well, the bears behind me have come from all over Cambodia. Um, many different stories there. A couple have been rescued straight from the hands of poachers. Uh, they've been caught in snares, so you'll notice they're missing their, their limbs. Um, a couple have been caught on the border, most likely trying to get across the border to Laos or Vietnam, where the bear bar farms are. What poachers were trying to take them across That's right, yeah, the and they'll sell them to the farms over there. Um, now, these, these farms, they're not those horrific things we see occasionally reported, are they, where they... They, they really mistreat the animals. Why is that? Uh, they, I guess they don't have the same empathy for animals as, as we do. We're brought up with animals. So for, for different cultural reasons, they're used in traditional medicines. So bear bile farms exist to you know, supply that demand. So bear bile, um, yeah, so they're kept in terrible conditions, small cages where the bears can't move. They often have their claws cut off, their teeth cut off, so they can't hurt their captors. Um, and they're usually uh, sedated and then they insert a needle and they take the bile out and they do this up to every few days and then that bile is sold for traditional medicine so it can be used from anything from anti-inflammatory right through to uh, strength and giving power. Yes, or any other nonsense they care to suggest. That's right. But yeah. that's not in Cambodia so much, is it? No, we're, in, here in Cambodia we're very fortunate. We don't have bear bile farms. So um, because of, I guess, organisations like us, we've, we've always had the pressure here um, and they haven't been able to establish. But unfortunately our neighbouring countries, uh, Laos, there's about 120 bears in farms there. In Vietnam, over 4,000 bears uh, are in farms currently. Working here all the time as you do, you must feel really good about these ones being saved That's and right. I guess you're pretty fond of them, are you? I am. <laughs> huh? They've all got their own personalities yeah, and you do. You, they come in and so you get to know them right from the start and they, they have their little personalities and it's, it's a re very rewarding feeling to see where they've come from and to be able to offer them a better life. So mm. certainly it's, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to do this. <laughs> And you came from Australia specifically to do this? I did, yes. I um, packed up my life in Australia and I'm now living in Cambodia. And um, yeah, I've been very lucky to work with these beautiful bears. In dealing with them, uh, maybe on a one-to-one -one basis, do you have to be careful because they are really essentially a wild animal, aren't they? They are, you're very right. Um, depending on their story as well, some have been almost tortured by, animal, uh, by humans. Sorry. So they mm. have a very... Uh, I guess, you know, they, they don't want to be near us, far less trust us. So it, it starts right from there that we have to gain their trust first. And that's giving them space sometimes and, and remaining hands off. And then you've got the other side who bears have been kept as pets or they come in as cubs and they naturally want to have some contact with, obviously they would prefer their mother, but to some of the bears wear their mother when they come in as cubs. So we do have to give them some hands on contact. but. As they get older, we're very much like a bear mother and we have to separate ourselves off um, until, you know, they are bears and naturally they have wild instincts and they've got big sharp claws and long teeth, so we, um, we keep our distance. Emma, they say we shouldn't treat wild animals uh, like humans, but um, what can you tell me about that one in the pool over there who looks to be enjoying uh, the having, afternoon. Having a great time. His name is James. Uh, James arrived about a year and a half ago as a, about a six month old cub we, we approximate. Um, he actually arrived with his sister um, Rose and unfortunately they were in terrible conditions so uh, they were caught. Uh, a poacher was taking, trying to get them across the border, most likely to a bear bile farm. So uh, they had been caught in snare traps. So as you can probably see, James is missing his uh, hand. So well, I have noticed a front paw is completely gone. Yeah, his front paw is completely gone while his sister Rose, it's right up to the elbow. So that was from a snare. And then you might see he's got some scarring around the back of his hind legs as well. So the captors then, once they got him out of the snare, they then hog tied him up and they used wire that actually went right down to the bone. So the poor little things when they arrived here, they're in very bad condition. 
condition. They mm. couldn't walk. Um, they had some very nasty wounds and, of course, snare injuries. So they had a lot of uh, veterinary care for mm. quite a few months and um, I guess were very untrusting of humans, which is, you know, very reasonable. Um, but now, as you can see, they're quite comfortable, enjoying the pools, enjoying the, the comforts of what we can <laughs> offer them. So they're doing much better. So they just play around all day. They do. They have quite the last. So we'll see if we can get Rose over. Please, yeah. Rose! <laughs> Rose! Rose! Does she know her name? She does. <laughs> they, they all get to know their name fairly quickly. Um, Is that a really nice hammock you've got for it's one of them? It's very comfortable. Yeah. We have uh, volunteers that come over and uh, make hammocks and enrichment items uh, for the bears. So How charming is that? How decent, is. huh? I know. <laughs> I don't have a hammock, but the bears do, so <laughs> yeah. they're very lucky. This is also a very friendly dog, and uh, the dog belongs to you, the director, I think. He does, yeah, the, yeah he, he belongs to me, but he's very much a uh, part of the team. <laughs> well, he fits in very well, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he looks looks big and vicious, but he's a uh, very friendly, soft Matt, fella. How long have you been involved with uh, the Free the Bear? I came over 10 years ago, um, oh, did uh, yeah, 10 years ago this December as a volunteer for mm -hmm. Free the Bears after I'd been in Australia for a year prior to that and met up with Mary. I was actually looking after some bears that had come from Cambodia in 97 in Perth Zoo. Oh, great. So I uh, phoned Mary up to give her an update on how the bears were doing and got off the phone an hour and a half later having to sign the rest of my life away apparently. <laughs> Right here, where they where they come from. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically, Mary said that there was a need for volunteers over here to come and help out. At that time, we only had 22 bears here, and so I I said I'd volunteer for three months and uh, never left. Well, something obviously got into your heart and soul once you got here. You loved them anyway, didn't you? But when yeah, you were surrounded yeah. I by mean, them. the bears are amazing. Cambodia is amazing. The, the people here are amazing. So, yeah, it's 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 a hard country to leave. <laughs> An Australian woman, Mary Hutton of Perth, founded Free the Bears, and as we shall see, it's equipped to perform medical treatment on bears in the sanctuary. The Free the Bears Foundation brings medical professionals and modern equipment into the sanctuary for major bear care. What sorts of preparations are going on in here, Matt? Uh, we've got a few big surgeries lined up over the next few days, um, so it's just uh, a lot of equipment that our local vet team haven't used before, so there's, uh, today's going to be a lot of discussion on what's lying ahead over the next 7 to 10 days, and yeah, making sure that all the equipment's up and ready for when we actually get the bears on the table. We're probably going to be removing some gallbladders from some bears that have been tapped for their bile. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty major surgery. Uh, major surgery, yes. Yeah. And at a glance, you seem to have a, a multinational team here. We do. We have Australia, Cambodia, uh, Scotland via, or well, South Africa via Scotland, Spain and France. Oh, that's a good And start. England, obviously, yeah. So, so yeah, oh, pretty, pretty international. But yeah, lots, lots of good people who are helping out. And is everybody in here qualified medically, are they? Is that the kind of team it is? We actually, we have one, two, three, four, five vets in here and two veterinary nurses. You look forward to your annual visit here to Cambodia? I do. Yes, I send you that email every now and again and go, I think I might head your way. Needs to work. Needs to do some real work. So, you know, it's good. I love it over here. And uh, the work is so worthwhile, isn't it? It is. And I think the organisation too, you know, it's very... Um, Focused and good, you can sort of see like year after year. Like they come over each year, and each year it's just you know amazing leaps and bounds of what they're doing and the education side of stuff and the whole thing. So they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. And back home, do you find uh, people in the community know 
about this practice and, and really increasing They certainly help. know about Free the Bears, yeah. like they've got a really good exposure back yeah. home. Um, the individual hospitals is um, you know less known about, but they certainly know the, the name Free the Bears, right. they certainly know what work yeah. they're doing and get a pretty good concept, so they've got a pretty good exposure back in Australia, so yeah. And uh, when you get to you certainly deliver, I can see that already. Excellent work. Yes. <laughs> The really good thing about this, obviously with what Chen has done here, is that that tells you the heart rate and occasionally an animals will get it wrong. You're getting a trace, so there's two sort of contractions in the heart and so there's a wave of oxygenation that will actually go through the blood vessels. So you can see that's working already. That will tell you the percentage of oxygen in the blood. <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> Where did this little one come from, Matt? You know? He was captured by soldiers up at the Prava here. Oh, yeah. Border with yeah. Thailand. So, yeah, they, the soldiers caught him and were trying to sell him, but um, word got around and so they managed to persuade them to hand him over. So, do you think his life was endangered when he was uh, oh, absolutely, captured? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah he would have been. Um, I well, probably ended up either with bear paw soup or perhaps in the bear trade in the pet trade for for a little while. Did they see from his markings or did you just say he's a sun bear? He's a sun bear. <laughs> he is a little sun bear. He just happens to be one of the cutest little sun bears around. Yeah. <laughs> Was he in reasonable reasonable health when you got him here? Pretty pretty good, yeah. Yeah. We have some come in in uh, bad shape, but he's he hadn't been captured that long, and um, he'd been pretty well looked after, hadn't he? Hadn't he? So this is learning to climb, is it? Yeah. A, he, he gets up so far, no one wants to come down again. The rescue centre is owned by the Cambodian government. It's the Cambodian government's facility for the placement of all rescued wildlife in the country. So Matt, the, uh, the future for the organisation looks good, does it? Um, yeah, yeah, we've got a fantastic team here. I mean, I'm really, really pleased, obviously, with our Cambodian team that we have here, and yeah, obviously the uh, overseas uh, helpers yeah. coming in and like, no, the training capacity so building. Um, Vuti here behind us here. He's uh, been working with Freedom Bears since uh, 1997, so, yeah. since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. First, he was the first person we employed in Cambodia. He's now our Cambodian program manager, and he's actually just been nominated and uh, declared a finalist for the Future for Nature Award in 2012. So we're really pleased about that. Yes. Getting a bit of Cambodian recognition uh, on a global stage. So that's nice. <laughs> And who uh, stops these big plastic balls of food? Uh, we try and get volunteers involved, um, but otherwise it's myself and a couple of the keepers. So one of my jobs is really getting enrichment and training up to speed. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Sandy. This is Sandy, isn't it? This is Sandy, yeah. So as you can see, she's uh, missing some of her front yeah. floor there. Quite oh. badly. Yeah. It is. It's quite a high amputation, um, and she can't actually use that paw at all. But oh, as you can see, she, oh. she does get around okay. She does have to, you know, hop along. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she's still and she's getting first forward. arrived. She sure <laughs> is. So we'll give her a ball. There you go. Oh! Oh, 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 more than welcome. Yeah. The only aim of it is not to doink them on the head. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, like, I like the fun and games. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to skip out that other one. Are you going to share? Brandy! Brandy! Oh. Why really are they? Why are they doing it like that on their backs? They've actually learned. So when the treats fall out, rather than falling mm. on the ground, they're, they're oh. falling on their bellies, and they can simply just sniff yeah. it out and pick it out <laughs> off their belly. So it's how that, smart is that? It's huh? quite clever. <laughs> it is. What is actually in these? 
Well, lots of goodies. So Are we've they? got some bananas, some sweet potato, oh. some dog biscuits, oh. and then of course the extra special jam. Jam is what they're smelling for, so we kind of put that in everything. And then we've got grass, just a bit of grass and bamboo to block the entrance so it's not so hard for them just to yeah. scoop it on out. Yes. But the jam is what they're after, the sweet So it's to feed them, treat. give them a treat, keep them entertained for some time. Yeah. That's right. But I noticed one of them came out to take a good look to see whether it was going to be worth his while to come exactly. over. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. If there's no jam, they're like, oh, that's no, no. a little bit too much work for me today. <laughs> um, so they're, they're a little bit too well. Bed, I yeah. guess then they're, they're not starving so they're really cared for aren't yeah. they get one over there. mom Brandy. now there's a wonderful bear that could be mistaken for a lion you would think you very agree? true yeah. we get it all the time we get very nervous people coming up and saying you've got a lion in with your bears yeah. and we're like oh that will be brandy so yeah brandy <laughs> is our blonde black bear so she's very special um, is that something of a, an albino uh, it, effect it, it's not an albino effect so she she has normal eyes and she doesn't oh, no, have that no. pink pigment to mm. her you know extremes but um her color is is very special it's, yeah. it's a throwback so i think uh, there's there's a few brandies in the world but it's no not common at all mm. um, i and get asked a lot did blondes have more fun uh, <laughs> in the bear world and i'd have to say Maybe she she seems to get the respect. She's she's the, one of our older girls, and mm. all these all her friends seem to really mind her and and look after her very well. well she's very special indeed. She is. Many of the bears previously were subjected to shocking mistreatment by willful practitioners of primitive medicine. That freethebears.org.au is successfully rehabilitating their damaged bodies is a tribute to their dedication and respect for the living environment. The Asian sun bears and moon bears are a real treasure of nature.